Okay, so for my University of the Cumberlands class, we are doing an action research plan. So I chose to do my action research on a close reading strategy called purposeful annotation. And I'm focusing on how this purposeful annotation affects student reading comprehension across the content area. So not just in reading and learning, but in different content areas as well. Next slide. Okay, and this is just the introduction. Uh, the researcher, which is me, will implement a series of lessons in which students of middle school level will use the close reading strategy in engaging in complex Teachers, we need Steve Taylor's run to report to the bus at this time. So they'll be using different types of text. If you look at Common Core, complex and challenging text is written many times. So that, so this action plan is aligned with the Common Core. Next slide. And the purpose of this is just to see what kind of close reading strategies work the best for reading comprehension. So if this one works well, we can use it more. If it doesn't work well, we can keep trying and find something different. Okay, next slide. Okay, the literature review. Um, close reading is described by Brown and Katz as the investigation of a short piece of text with multiple reading duns over a multiple over multiple instructional lessons. It's also described as reading with a pencil. Of course, we already said it's aligned with the Common Core standards, and it helps the teacher facilitate learning, and the students are responsible for their own learning. It's student-centered, which helps it be more engaging. Okay, and then this here is written by Hinchman and Moore, and they're basically just telling you how to close read, and the steps are read and reread, annotate, which means to basically take notes, I call it marking the text, summarize, be able to retell what you just read, self-explain, and then of course determine the significance of what you notice. So in my class I'm having students pick out figurative language and label that and anything else that they might catch. Okay, next slide. Okay, key aspects. It's really good for motivation and student engagement. Students enjoy it, especially because they get to work with their classmates. I tell them they're going to work with an elbow partner, so somebody close by. They have discussions about a short piece of text. They write about it, discuss it, and then we talk about it in a classroom discussion. And, of course, it helps them to build stamina. They're taking larger pieces of text. They're breaking it down into smaller pieces. It helps them to not feel overwhelmed. And, of course, it activates prior knowledge and connections. So the research questions, there's two actually that we're focusing on. One I've already discussed, which is the close reading strategy. And the second one focuses on our cultural shift survey, which is about this, this particular PLC. What did that survey say about our culture? Okay, justification, so why am I doing this? Um, well, of course, I need to know what are some good reading strategies that work with the students. As a reading teacher, I'm always trying to find new strategies that are going to work better. And what works for different content areas. I'm not just focusing on literature. I'm going to have to do a lot of nonfiction, informational reading. And how will close reading affect struggling readers? We talked earlier in our PLCs. We need to know what kind of interventions we can do to help novice readers. And what I'm hoping the data will reveal, well, I'm hoping that close reading is helpful to the students, especially when it comes to informational reading and literature helping them break down the text into smaller parts. All right, the participants. I decided to just focus on the sixth grade students because I have them more often. And there's two sixth grade classes. The first one has, is 32 students and the second one is 24 students. And I want to put a particular focus on 602 because that is where our struggling readers are. According to MAP, um, we're just positive. Okay, so back to our sampling participants. Um, I looked at the MAP scores projected proficiency report for just the sixth grade. In the 601 group, which we know is our high ability group. Teachers, we need the following buses to be dismissed at this time. Bebo's first round, Mike O'Quinn and Aaron Ward. We have one novice, and this is just in reading. One novice, nine apprentice, 15 proficient, and seven distinguished. And then in the low ability group, we have 13 novice, 11 apprentice, four proficient, and zero distinguished. And over here, it says that what the data tells us is that we actually have double the number of novice as we do distinguished.
distinguished. So we have 14 novice and 7 distinguished. That's something that we definitely want to fix before take prep. Okay, so this is the materials that I decided to use. I used a pre-test and a post-test just to see like how much the students improved. This is the test that I chose, and I have a link here. It's a test from Nebraska, actually. And I just took a couple of samples of it. I didn't use the entire test. So I used two samples. see, it's um, two reading passages. One is a speech, and the second one is a science article with a diagram. And there's a total of 15 multiple choice questions. I wanted to do something that they could complete in one class period. And then some of my other materials, of course, are the student work samples, star reading scores, and then the students did a short survey just talking about how they liked the close reading strategy. Okay, and this is just a copy of the survey that I gave the students, and they just wrote whether they strongly agreed, agreed, weren't sure, disagreed, or strongly disagreed. And I asked them about the overall helpfulness with a new text, with text that they didn't initially understand, new poetry, science, news articles, historical documents, and did it help them to locate key details. And this is just two snapshots I did of some student work. This is the poem Annabelle Lee. And what I had the students do, and I have the steps written out here, the students initially just read the poem silently to themselves, and then they reread it silently to themselves again, but this time they marked the text, any words they didn't know, they circled. Any questions they had, they wrote it out on the sides. If they noticed anything, like they noticed a metaphor, personification, they labeled it. Then in the second step, they have 10 minutes where they can team up with their elbow partner, or somebody close, and they just they look up those words, they go circle, they answer each other's questions, they talk about what they think the poem meant. And then in step three, we worked out on it as a class and we discussed what we found, what we learned, and what we think the poem meant. And we mostly just discussed figurative language since this was poetry. And then here, I didn't do a whole lot with history, but what I did do was the Declaration of Independence. And I found an article or an assignment where it broke the Declaration of Independence into smaller parts. And the students were to basically mark the text and then answer the questions that came after. So these are three examples. And you can see here that this student actually marked where like, she could find the answer to number three, the answer to number four. And they, they did pretty well on it where they were able to break it down into smaller parts. Okay, and this is the data analysis. This is the STAR reading. So I had, I had the students take the STAR test in August. So the yellow is August, and then what is in like dark purple is February. So the students that were below the 25th percentile, as you can see, in August they were at 40, about 48 percent, and in February they were below 40, they were about 39, 38 percent. So that number did decrease. And as you can see, the 75th and above increase. So they did do better, but because we've had so many snow days, we actually had two snow days, two NTI days, President's Day, and we had an early dismissal right before we did the STAR test. So I think the scores would have been much better if we'd been in school consistently, but because we had so much time out, I don't think the students were on their A game. So they're going to take this test again. I think that they'll show more growth the second time. Okay, and this is just showing the results of the pre-test and post-test. Um, we had 38% that grew, 46% that stayed the same, and 16% that regressed. They, had, they didn't do better than they did the first time, and 56 students took this. Uh, possible reasons for the lack of growth. Once again, we had all those snow days. I didn't get to do all the lessons that I had intended for this particular action research plan, so they didn't really get... The, the re I didn't get the research completed, so I think that they would have done better had the research went more smoothly. Okay, and this is the survey that the students had taken, and I asked them if you remember how they felt close reading helped them with poetry, and a large number, actually about 65%, strongly agreed that it helped them with poetry. And I think the number is so high here because we did a lot of poetry, we did a lot of background on po poems, and it helped them to break that down. And we 
we even have a large number that agreed, which is 25%, very low amounts said it didn't help them or they weren't sure. And the number is lower when you get to articles in history. And this, of course, is because I didn't get into the articles in history like I did with the poetry because we had so many snow days, so many interruptions. But overall, the students do feel like it helps them break down the text, find key details, and helps them overall not be so overwhelmed when they see a challenging text. Okay, and this is just reiterating what I already said. You know, the students practice more with poetry, so that is why the survey showed that they strongly agreed to help them. They were more comfortable annotating the, the poetry than they were with historical documents or articles because we didn't have that time together. And it shows me that I do need to focus more on nonfiction texts. But the students did seem to enjoy it. Overall, it was, you know, the lessons were student-centered. They enjoyed doing the academic talk. And it provided some leadership opportunities for students to share out ideas during classroom discussions. So what suggestions do you have regarding the next steps for this action plan? So my question to you all is, what could I do with the data that I have now? Is it to help with the novice readers? Yeah, yeah to help with the novice readers. Mm -hmm. See, we, well, I did the purposeful imitation, but I didn't focus on non-reading, or non, um, non-fiction, so you think that I need to incorporate more non-fiction? Yeah. yeah. To draw, you know, if the kids aren't interested in what they're reading, then, you know, that might take away from, well. yeah, they don't do as well, because, I mean, I'm not into, you know, fictional stuff as mm -hmm. much as I am, you know. So I think that would really help as well. You're right, and uh, that actually probably would help with the boys. Yeah, too. definitely. Mm -hmm. Because the boys, I believe, do have a preference, don't they, for yeah. nonfiction. So mm -hmm. they may show some improvement. That would be good for a research to show, like, girls and boys. Mm -hmm. Given, like, improve. different, you know, things that they could read for. Mm -hmm. I think maybe an incentive. Can they maybe do like a boy girl competition or a most mm -hmm. improved or oh, yeah. something maybe? <coughs> yeah, and then maybe tally it on the bulletin board so they could see the progress. Yeah, yeah. that sounds great. That way they would get the benefits without really having to see them. Right. Okay. Okay, I like those ideas. Okay. And this is just my personal reflection, the benefits of doing an action research plan like we talked about. Um, just better understanding, understanding of what strategies work um, provides data to guide instruction. So as you saw, you know, I didn't do so well with the historical documents and the articles because I didn't get to it. So that data showed me that they were needing it. Um, of course, it leads to professional growth. I know what works, what doesn't, and it helps to evolve instruction so I can meet the needs of the students that we have today. And those are my references for the literature review. If you want to check that out. And this is the second part of the, of the action research. And this is just focusing on the cultural shift survey. And it says, what effect did the cultural shift survey reveal about the middle school PLC at Elkhorn City Elementary School? So just about this particular PLC group. You move on to the next slide. So the survey that we used, and we did this a couple of weeks ago, I think we actually did it on an MPI day, and it was the culture survey. And the reason I picked this particular survey is because it had a focus on collaboration, and that's something that I'm personally interested in, is collaborating more. And the survey also explores cultural shifts in different categories. So the categories that we focused on were school culture, uh, fundamental purpose, the use of assessments, what we do when students don't learn, the work, the focus, and of course professional development. And this is just a snapshot of what the survey looked like. So I just wanted to include that to remind you what those look like. We're going to look at it again later on. And this is the results of the survey. So school culture, it showed that, let's see, we have 
a high number and progressing. So there were about six people that took the survey. So more people said that we were progressing with the culture on purpose. We had more that said that we were exemplary, so showed that we had strong school purpose. Assessments, we were progressing, response, progressing um, with the work, more so progressing and focus. We were proficient and professional development. We are exemplary because we, we've all been sent to a lot of professional development this year. And this is just a, another snapshot of what the survey looked like. So again, it said school culture so that we were progressing or in the proficient range. So that mostly focuses on like, do we work independently or interdependence? Do we rely on each other? Um, is it a language of complaint or a language of commitment? And is it long-term strategic planning or planning for the short-term win? I think for the most part we are, um, you know, strategically thinking, but the only thing is I think a lot of us work independently. I know I do. And that's something I kind of I want to work on. Fundamental purpose is proficient and exemplary, and that focuses on, you know, are we focusing on teaching? Are we focusing on learning? And then with use of assessments, we have scored ourselves as progressing, so we're focusing more on common, we're not focusing on um, <coughs> common assessments, we're not sharing the same assessments, and we're not doing a lot of collaborations, and we're not developing assessments in our PLC, that's something that we can do eventually, that we can do later on. Response, just what do we do when the students don't learn, we put progressing and proficient um, you know, we do a lot of interventions. Um, we have provided extra time and support. A lot, I know a lot of people do tutoring after school. Uh, with work beginning and progressing. So, again, you know, a lot of us kind of work on our own. Um, but we are getting into that range where we are starting to collaborate more with our PLC. I think that's what the PLC is doing, is helping us with collaboration. Focus is on progressing and proficient. Levels that we're focusing on results, um, using SMART goals, we're using our collaborative teams, forming common assessments, and then with professional development, I think you know we're learning by doing. I know with the workshop they sent me to, we did a lot of doing. Um, we had to do writing ourselves, and I know some like some of you have been to Idols, and there's some other lesson plan or professional development activities that we've been doing. Um, possible steps for improvement. These are just some ideas that I threw out that could help us get into the proficiency range in all categories. You know, we could have more colleague conversations, which with our PLC we're doing that. Um, agenda, something that we could do in our PLCs is show student work samples. You know, how's this student doing for you? This is how he or she's doing for me. Um, maybe make some common strategies, so like if the purposeful annotation had worked really well, like we could all kind of use that or find something else that we all enjoyed or want to use in our classrooms. Common assessments is common activity <coughs> with our students. Team teach, I think that's more like um, with special education teachers, like if I'm teaching something, I could, um, I could bring in Melina or Sherry and they could kind of work with a smaller group to the side. Yeah. And then peer observations, we could just kind of observe each other and help each other in that way. And then what is next? What are some possible next steps to improve the culture of the PLC? Or just basically what, sh what could we do for our PLC to make it stronger? So what, do you, what do you think? And this is my last slide. More conversation between the teachers. Okay, more conversations? Yeah, more sharing. I would love to share and see some work samples like, to see if our you know, math assessments look similar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if we kind of have the same components as your reading assessments. Oh, yeah. Format, I guess, is better. Mm -hmm. And then with the workshop that I went to with constructive response, we did a lot of math. So that's something that I need to share with the too in the next PLC. So just more conversations. More time together. Yeah, that's what I was yeah. going to say, too. Just having more time together. I mean, 